Feeling like a cowgirl or cowboy at heart, but born in a different era? No worries, because the Wild West isn't entirely gone. While it's not exactly the 1800s, there are still towns in the USA that offer a taste of that Wild West experience. Whether well-preserved or recreated, these places provide history, atmosphere, and a chance to live the Wild West days. Think gunfights and outlaws. These are the 10 legendary Wild West towns, then and now. Number 10. Silverton, Colorado. If you're hopping aboard the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad, make sure to swing by Silverton, Colorado. This charming mountain town serves up a hefty dose of Wild West vibes. Tucked snugly between two San Juan mountain passes, Silverton earned its stripes as the mining town that never quit. Once upon a time, it was all about silver mining, and the notorious Blair Street Red Light District added a dash of glitz to the scene. Silverton got its name thanks to all that shiny silver they dug up, but you see getting in and out of these crazy mountains was no walk in the park. And those mines? They were like a way out in the middle of nowhere, making it tough for prospectors to strike it rich like they wanted to. Silverton, Colorado, is like a cool old mining town stuck in a time warp, nestled up high in the river of Lost Souls Valley. It's got just one paved road, which is basically a sidekick of the million dollar highway. The year-round crowd is around 600 folks, and they're all about outdoor fun. Plus, they get a kick out of those old-school steam trains chugging in from Durango regularly, keeping the good times rolling. While you're soaking in the sights of this picturesque town, don't forget to check out the San Juan County Historical Society, Mining Heritage Center, and the Grand Imperial. And whatever you do, don't pass up the chance to explore the old Hundred Gold Mine Tour, where you can venture deep into Galena Mountain. Make sure to wander the charming historic streets too. They're full of surprises. Number 9. Bandera, Texas Y'all ever heard of the cowboy capital of the world? Well, that's none other than Bandera, Texas. This place is a total haven for folks who've got a hankering for the Wild West. Back in the 1800s, Bandera marked the southern end of the Great Western Cattle Trail. Chillin' in the hill country, Bandera is all about those gorgeous views and cowboy vibes. Seriously, some of Texas's prettiest nature spots are right around here, and the town's hanging out by the super clean Medina River. So, if you're looking for some wild adventures and stuff to keep you busy, Bandera's got your back. Hold on to your hats, because even today, Bandera's got that old western charm. You can chow down on some grub at chuck wagon dinners, tip your hat at the saloons, kick up your boots at dude ranches, cheer on at rodeos, and even catch some wild gunfight reenactments. And the fun doesn't stop there. Bandera's got more cowboy-themed shindigs than you can lasso. There's Cowboy Mardi Gras, the Wild Hog Explosion, Spring Fling, Bandera Pro Rodeo, Cowboy Capital Christmas Night Parade, and Mayhem on the Medina. Besides all the cowboy stuff and Old West vibes, Bandera's got a lot more going on. Like this little hill country town is all about the music scene, and you can catch live tunes pretty much any day of the week. You gotta check out the 11th Street Cowboy Bar. It's like the hot spot for country music and awesome brews. Plus, there's spots like Jake's in Pipe Creek and the Core Coffee House, this cute volunteer-run cafe that's super cozy and does good deeds too. While you're in town, why not mosey on over to the original jail and county courthouse for a look-see? And if you're into history, Bandera's got museums and historic spots galore. If you're feeling a bit adventurous, you can even hop on a horse for a scenic trail ride. Yeehaw! Number 8. Amarillo, Texas Amarillo, Texas, with its wide open spaces, was like a magnet for ranchers back in the 1800s. And guess what? Today, this place is still giddy about its cowboy heritage. So, if you find yourself cruising through Amarillo, you can dive headfirst into all things cowboy. We're talking trail riding, watching the Polk Street cattle drive, and checking out a bunch of museums that are all about the Wild West, including the American Quarter Horse Association Museum. 
Amarillo is also like the big economic hub for the Texas Panhandle, plus Eastern New Mexico and the Oklahoma Panhandle. They're all about that meat packing game here. Like, they process about a quarter of all the beef in the whole U.S. It's also where the Texas Cattle Feeders Association sets up shop. Oh, and don't forget about the oil biz. They're big into petroleum extraction too. But hold on to your boots, cause there's more. Amarillo knows how to throw a rodeo bash. They've got the Coors Cowboy Club Ranch Rodeo, the Tri-State Fair and Rodeo, the Working Ranch Cowboy Association Rodeo, and even the World Championship Ranch Rodeo. It's a whole day of wild entertainment. Think bull riding, barrel racing, roping, and of course plenty of grub and shopping to boot. Number 7. Oatman, Arizona Alright, let me give you the lowdown on Oatman. It's nestled in the Black Mountains of Mojave County, Arizona. Back in the day, it kicked off as a tiny mining camp, but then two lucky prospectors hit the jackpot with a whopping $10 million gold find, and bam! Just like that, Oatman's population blew up by 3,500 folks in less than a year. Now, the name Oatman might sound a bit random, but it's got some history behind it. It's a nod to Olive Oatman, a young gal who got kidnapped by Indians back in 1851 and ended up in a bit of a sticky situation, forced into slavery, and even got her face tattooed by the Mojave Indians who adopted her. She finally got her freedom in 1856 at Fort Yuma, Arizona, and lived out her days until 1903. But back to Oatman's story, in 1941, the government decided to shut down the town's mining operation. Lucky for Oatman, it was sitting pretty right next to Route 66, smack dab in the middle of the road for travelers between Kingsman and Needles, California. So, the town kinda reinvented itself for the road trippers and did alright. But hold on to your hats, cause things took a turn in 1953 when a new road was built. Oatman got ghost town status by 1960. Yet fast forward to today, thanks to the renewed love for old Route 66, Oatman's back in the game. Tourists roll in to see wild burrows strolling down the streets, catch some Wild West shootout reenactments, and soak in all the other cool stuff this place has to offer. Y'all should definitely check it out. Number 6. Santa Fe, New Mexico So let me spill the beans about Santa Fe. It's got a heck of a history. First off, it was the turf of the indigenous folks who called it home. But then, it also had a starring role in the Wild West story. It's not just the oldest city in New Mexico, but also the oldest capital in the whole U.S. Talk about ancient vibes! Santa Fe used to be known as the Dancing Ground of the Sun by the early Native Americans. And then, around the early 1900s, the city's OGs decided to call it the City Different. Santa Fe had its fair share of handshakes, changing ownership like a hot potato. Finally, the United States snagged it in the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. It even had a cameo in the Civil War and became the home of the Santa Fe National Cemetery. Now, here's the twist. When the railroads started stretching out westward, folks thought Santa Fe was gonna be the next big stop. But nope, it got bypassed like yesterday's news. Times were tough, but Santa Fe bounced back in the early 20th century. People flocked here for the climate, thinking it was a miracle cure for tuberculosis. Plus, the New Mexico Museum of Art opened its doors, adding a dash of uniqueness to the mix. In 1926, they set up the Old Santa Fe Association with a mission to preserve and maintain ancient landmarks, historical structures, and the traditions of Old Santa Fe. No matter what you call it, Santa Fe is seriously one of the coolest places on earth. You've got like four centuries of history and all kinds of legendary stuff going on here. Plus, there's a mix of ancient and modern cultures, awesome outdoor activities, artsy stuff, delicious food, relaxing spas, and some seriously unique shopping. It's the whole package. Fast forward to today, Santa Fe is a real gem in the urban jungle of the U.S. It's got these old Pueblo-style buildings that are like a blast from the past, and folks here really dig their history. That's why it's a hot spot for tourists and a melting pot of different vibes. Definitely worth a visit. Number 5. Cody, Wyoming 
Y'all ever heard of Cody out in Northwest Wyoming? Well, it's got a legendary backstory. This place got its name from none other than Colonel William Frederick Buffalo Bill. Cody, you know, one of the big shots from the Wild West era. Why? Cause old Buffalo Bill was all in on this town's potential back in the day. He saw the land, the water, the views, and how close it was to Yellowstone, and thought, why not build a town here? So, in the mid-1890s, he went ahead and did just that. Back then, Cody was like the poster child for a Wild West town. Fast forward to today, and you'll still find that Western charm alive and kicking. Cody proudly calls itself the rodeo capital of the world. It's a lively place that loves its pioneer past and being a gateway to Yellowstone. Check out the Irma Hotel downtown, built by Buffalo Bill himself. In the summer, you can even catch the Wild Bunch doing a shootout show in front of the hotel. That's when Cody really comes alive. For more history, hop on a Cody trolley tour to see cool stuff like the Buffalo Bill Reservoir, old pioneer homes, and the historic district. Don't forget to wander through Old Trail Town nearby where they've got 25 old-timey buildings that are totally authentic inside and out. They're rocking the same old-school style, and heck, some of the folks look like they stepped right out of the 1890s. Sure, there's a touristy vibe here and there, but mostly, it's like time stood still in Cody. Y'all gotta check it out. Number four, Virginia City, Nevada. All right, folks, let me take you on a trip back to the 19th century mining frenzy in Virginia City, Nevada. This place was the real deal, smack dab between Denver and San Francisco, and it was the industrial hotshot of the era. People were striking it rich left and right, and they weren't holding back when it came to building. We're talking mansions, opera houses, hotels, schools, you name it. Virginia City story? Well, it all started with the Comstock load, one of the first big silver deposits found in the whole country. Like most mining boomtowns, this place practically shot up overnight. At its peak, it had a whopping 25,000 folks living the dream. But, as you can guess, once the mines ran dry, people started packing their bags. Fast forward to today, and Virginia City's still got that historic vibe going strong. They've kept those old boardwalks and historic buildings in tip-top shape, making it a primo spot for tourists. You'll find all kinds of cool stuff here from the Bucket of Blood Saloon to the Suicide Table. And don't forget about Piper's Opera House. That's one of the main attractions in town. Plus, they've got some wild events, like The Devil Made Me Do It, Saloon Crawl, and some good old historical reenactments. Sure, the population's on the small side, but this place knows how to make a buck from tourism and keep the history alive. They even scored a National Historic Landmark designation for their mining area, which helps keep that old-timey feel alive and well. Virginia City, a real nugget of history, folks. Number three, Dodge City, Kansas. Let's now take a laid-back trip to Dodge City, Kansas. This place is in Ford County, and it's got a history as wild as the Old West itself. So, here's the deal. Originally, it was called Fort Mann, set up back in 1847 to keep travelers safe on the Santa Fe Trail. But guess what? It got roughed up by the Indians in 1848 and sat empty till the Civil War ended. Come April 1865, Dodge City rose from the ashes and became a pit stop for travelers. Over time, it earned a rep as a real Old West frontier town. We're talking more gunfighters, saloons, gambling joints, and brothels than you could shake a stick at. That's what drew a crowd. Now, it's not as rowdy as those heydays, mind you. Fort Dodge closed shop in 1882, and by 1886, the big cattle drives that put Dodge City on the map had gone the way of the dodo. But hey, Dodge City didn't fade into oblivion. Nope, it held onto its history and kept on trucking as a thriving community. By the late 1800s, Dodge City's reputation had spread like wildfire. It became the star of books, movies, Nickelodeons, and TV shows. That turned it into a tourist hotspot. And now, more than 100,000 folks roll in every year to stroll around. Check out the Boot Museum. 
take a gander at the Front Street reconstruction and soak up all that Dodge City charm. Y'all gotta swing by. It's a real slice of Old West history. Number two, Deadwood, South Dakota. Now let me give you the scoop on Deadwood. It's a cool South Dakota spot in Lawrence County. Now, the name might make you think it's all spooky, but it's just because they found a bunch of dead trees around here. But here's the real kicker. In 1874, they struck gold down in the southern Black Hills. And bam, the Black Hills gold rush was on like Donkey Kong. Miners started rolling in, and they stumbled upon a gulch with those dead trees and a stream chock full of gold. And just like that, Deadwood was born. Now Deadwood wasn't exactly known for playing by the rules. Nah, it was more like a magnet for outlaws, gamblers, gold hunters, and all kinds of colorful characters. Some big names from the Wild West scene, like Calamity Jane, Wild Bill Hickok, and Potato Creek Johnny, made themselves known around these parts. Here's the kicker. Deadwood had a few close calls with some major fires, but it managed to come out unscathed. And in 1989, they decided to legalize some limited wage gambling, and that was like a defibrillator jolt for the town. Fast forward to today, and Deadwood's jumping. You got your modern casinos, hotels, restaurants, the whole shebang. But here's the cool part. They've kept that gold rush era look alive and well. You can dive into museums, catch some reenactments, soak up the artsy scene, and hop on historical tours. Deadwood's got a little something for everyone, folks. Number one, Tombstone, Arizona. Let me take you on a trip to Tombstone, Arizona, the spot where the OK Corral went down. Now, that place is famous for one of the wildest gunfights in the Wild West, and it happened on October 26, 1881. Picture this, it was a lightning fast, 30 second showdown between some lawmen and a bunch of outlaws who called themselves the Cowboys. This whole showdown was like the grand finale of a long-standing feud. You see, the Earp brothers, all wearing badges, were getting death threats left and right from these cowboy troublemakers. When push came to shove, lead started flying, and folks from both sides bit the dust or got themselves seriously hurt. Back then, lawmen had their hands full, trying to keep the outlaws in check over those vast open spaces. Fast forward to today, tombstones like a living time capsule. The Wild West spirit's still alive, and you can roll into this historic complex any day from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., except for Thanksgiving and Christmas. They put on three gunfight reenactments every day, and there are all sorts of other shows you can grab tickets for. But wait, there's more. You've got museums and places that'll transport you back to 1881, showing you how things looked back in the day of that legendary gunfight. Plus, you can stroll right into the 1880s Museum of Arizona's oldest newspaper, The Epitaph. You can read those original reports of the big showdown and even see how they made the newspaper on the old school Washington hand press. Y'all don't want to miss it. If you know anything about the Wild West, you'd know there's no way to list all of its best towns at once. So this is just a taste. There's a lot more, but that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.